without further ado, we would like to introduce our main speaker for today, Mr. Damo Sojanto, Chief Investment Strategist for UOBN Invest. Damo is responsible for providing leadership in the investment aspects of UOBAM's digital platform. He also concurrently heads the Investment Partnership and Solutions Unit at UOBAM, managing the firm's strategic tie-ups and investment initiatives with external managers. Damo has over 20 years of investment and research experience in the finance industry. Over to you, Damo. Thank you, Bernice. Well, before I start, maybe to get an idea of what do you know about robo-advisors, how familiar you are with robo-advisors, let me run a quick poll uh, to see where everyone stands on robo-advisors. Right? If I may have the poll questions. Okay, the question go, have you heard or invested with a robo-advisor before? Let's see what people think. Okay, so... Half of you say, I've heard of but have not invested with a robo-advisor. Uh, with about, I'll call it one third of you have invested with a robo-advisor, uh, but some know how it works and some, do some don't. Okay, great. You guys are probably the audience that I want to address. Let me talk about how, what is a robo-advisor and how it works. So what is a robo-advisor? A robo-advisor is basically a computer program based on mathematical rules or algorithm that helps to design an investment portfolio and manage your investment portfolio for you with minimal or moderate human intervention. So the history of robo-advisor was probably started in 2008 with Betterman in the US, which started taking money from investors in 2010. So it actually grew out of the global financial crisis. Before that, actually, uh, robo-advisor-like programs uh, has been have, been, has, have been available to financial advisors. So financial advisors has already been using tools uh, to help design and invest clients' money. But a robo-advisor or commercial robo-advisor basically leveled that playing field between end investors and financial advisors. So how do robo-advisors work? Well, most robo-advisors basically are based on uh, modern portfolio theory, which basically states that there is a best portfolio for investors at various levels of, of risk. Modern portfolio th theory was formulated in the 1960s and won the Nobel Prize before. So basically, if you see Robo-advisor says that their system is based on uh, Nobel, Prize win, uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, concept or theory. Uh, that's basically modern portfolio theory that they are talking about. And what does modern portfolio, how does modern portfolio theory works? Well, imagine you have a, a portfolio made out of 50% equities and 50% fixed income or bonds. Uh, that portfolio would have an expected return and an expected volatility. So that's represented by a blue dot in the, in the chart, right? And if you adjust that portfolio and say 55% equities and 45% fixed income, it creates another blue dot. And you can keep on reiterating that, that process with various asset classes, with various asset securities, to get all the expected return and all the expected volatility based on various combination. And after a while, you realize that the, one that the ones that are at the most outer rim of all the various dots are probably what we call the efficient frontier. That's really the best portfolio you can generate because for every risk level, every volatility level, that's the best return that you can expect. <clears throat> so that's basically the efficient frontier and the modern portfolio theory basically says that at every risk level, there is a best portfolio that you can achieve with the appropriate combination of, uh, of different asset classes to achieve, that, those combina uh, to achieve those returns. So basically, that's what modern portfolio theory is. And a lot of a lot of robo-advisors, including ours, actually use modern portfolio theory as a, as a basis. That at each risk level, there is an appropriate uh, asset 
class combination that gives you the best return. So you can imagine that on the, on the one end with the highest risk and the highest return is probably somewhere about 100% equities. And as you go down that curve, basically it's a matter of we are putting probably a bit more fixed income of more bonds in the portfolio and less equity. So that reduces the volatility, but also reduces the expected return. So how do we work? How does UOBAM invest work? So basically, we start off with assessing your risk appetite, meaning that we look at, at your capacity and your ability to take risk by asking you a few risk questions. And at the same time, we ascertain your investment horizon, meaning that uh, if you have a long investment horizon, obviously then uh, we, our, we would feel, think that you would be able to take more risk. Whereas if your investment horizon is short, uh, if you only have a one, two year or three year investment horizon, then you shouldn't be taking too much risk because uh, your ability to take risk actually reduces because uh, you can't, the portfolio can't take as much market volatility. Once we ascertain your risk appetite and your investment horizon, we we'll actually design the appropriate investment portfolio for you. Right? So this would be based on, based on the first two criteria. And once that uh, investment portfolio is designed and you transfer money into the account, the, the algorithm will basically start executing trades to build that design portfolio. Uh, after that, what happens is that on a regular basis, we would rebalance your portfolio to ensure that your portfolio stay within design. What do, you mean, what do we mean by that? Well, imagine that you started at $100 uh, portfolio with 50-50 uh, in equities and fixed income. Right? So you start with $50 in equities and $50 in fixed income. Now, imagine that we had a good run in equity market. Uh, your equity portfolio went up 20%, bringing it to $60. $60. At the same time, your fixed income gives you about 2% return, or 4% return, so bringing it to about $52. Now, obviously, a $60 and $52 portfolio between equities and fixed income is not 50-50 anymore. So we have to bring it back to a 50-50 portfolio because you are now overexposed to equity. So the system or the algorithm will basically sell about $4 of equities and put it into a fixed income. So both sides would now be about $56. So that keeps it back into a 50-50 portfolio. That's what we meant by rebalancing. And this, is, this happens automatically without you having to do anything. So that's actually one of the benefits of with the, investing in a robo-advisor. There are also quite a number of misconceptions that people have about robo-advisor. The first misconception, the most first common misconception that we hear is that it's all about robots. Once you sign on, you know, you're dealing with robots and uh, there's no human interaction at all. Well, there are two parts to it. The first part is, of course, the algorithm is going to be executed and run by, by robots, by computer. That's true, but the design is actually, it takes a lot of human uh, intellectual, uh, a lot of human design that, that went in to make sure that the, the whole uh, investment journey is easy to use. Uh, it's, it's basically and customized to your, to, your, uh, to your profile. So there is a lot of uh, human design behind all this computer algorithm. This includes things like our proprietary uh, CMA or capital market assumption. Basically, we put a lot of thoughts in terms of, your, of the risk return profile of the asset class. This includes the selection of the ETFs that we use um, and so on. These, all these are actually uh, involve a lot of human design behind it. And the second part is that there is human customer support available. So you don't have to worry if you run into problem, uh, we will have human customer support, their human investment buddy that's going to reach out to you. So don't, you don't have to worry that there is no human interaction behind your robo-advisor. The second misconception that we hear is that 
robo advisors are meant for small investors or for young investors or for new investors. Uh, basically, uh, our experience and also the industry studies show that the average age uh, of the investor in a robo advisor is likely to be in their 40s. So it's not really meant for young investors. It's meant for young investors and investors of all ages. Again, it's designed to be simple to use, but the thought be that goes behind it is really complex. So that it actually caters to various uh, investors or investors with various degree of invest investment experience. So if you are new, you can keep the investment journey simple. Just follow the just follow the instruction, and you'll be able to to invest uh, to to invest your money. But if you have investment experience and you basically want more customization, that can be done too. I think uh, once, you, once you download the, uh, the app and basically play around with it, you realize that there's actually customization that you can, you can do uh, to your portfolio to express your investment thoughts. Right. Thirdly, it's actually uh, people thought that the... Uh, Robot advisors is really meant for small investors. But we would argue that even if you're a high net worth, the bulk of your portfolio should be invested in a stable long-term investment program like the robo advisors. So basically, the, what you want to do or what you want uh, to use for opportunistic trading should really only make up with a small portion of your po overall portfolio and the bulk of your portfolio really should be in a stable long-term investment program like a robo-advisor. So the robo-advisor is really meant for everyone. It's meant for small investors and large, young investors and old, new investors and experienced ones as well. There are also people say that all robo-advisors are all the same, right? So because we all based on modern portfolio theory, so how different can it be? All are the same. Actually, uh, what I like to take this opportunity is to address that and basically show you how UOB AM Invest is really different. We basically use pro our proprietary investment process to define suitable asset classes first. Right? So instead of just giving you equities, broad equities and broad fixed income, we actually create more asset classes uh, within the algorithm so that we can actually create a portfolio with more nuances for you. I'll elaborate that later in the next slide. Once we define the suitable asset classes, we actually select the appropriate ETF to deliver the targeted returns for each asset class. So this again, uh, takes effort in the sense that we basically do screening and research to make sure that we pick the right ETF and imagine that because we have more asset classes, there are actually more ETFs that we use. And uh, we would actually have, we actually have uh, a whole list of criteria that we look out for when we, we select the ETFs. Thirdly is that, and this is important because we actually input our own uh, capital market assumptions, meaning that we input our own risk return expectation for each asset class that we put in. And it is really important because afterwards, I'll also elaborate why having the right capital market assumption is important for your portfolio. And then the fourth thing is that we implement investment constraints to optimize your portfolio. And because we are, uh, our invest we are fund managers ourselves, we take into account our experience. I mean, we basically use our experience that we have over the last 30 years to design this, this whole process. And we take into account even things like trading and execution, so that because we know that all these are costs that will eat into returns. So being fund manager, we are more aware and more conscious of these. So in terms of defining the suitable asset classes, basically we do this research. And for each asset class, we actually have, we actually look at the, the the expected return and the, also the correlations before, uh, between among asset classes. This is important because when, we, when you have asset classes that are too closely correlated, then there's no point 
adding those asset classes into the, into the portfolio. But if you have asset classes that are uncorrelated, then having this in your, in your portfolio actually achieves diversification benefits. And with that, basically, for us, we think having different as, uh, more asset classes would actually give, achieve a better portfolio for you because it gives you more nuances in terms of, in terms of returns, but also in terms of the diversification benefit. So this is part of our, one of the first steps that we, we do in, in designing our robo-advisor. The second thing we do is selecting the appropriate ETF. And as I mentioned just now, we look out for a few things, right? We look out for tracking error. Uh, I think tracking error basically means how good the ETF is in terms of tracking the return exp or the return of the market or the return of the index that it's trying to replicate. So a good ETF should have very low tracking error. And what we don't want to have is ETFs with big tracking error because then it's not achieving the expected asset class returns that, you are, that we are looking for. Two is that we look out for things like management fees and total expense ratio because what we want is ETF that has very low total expense ratio so that most of the returns or most of the benefit accrues to investors like you. Three is of course we look at market liquidity, meaning that we want liquid ETFs that investors can get in and out of quickly. Fourth is we look at the, the, the uh, ETF creator itself. So basically, we want reputable, reputable ETF creators with good trading and risk management systems so that we don't have problems uh, during market crisis. Because basically what we have is that ETF is... Uh, poses an asymmetrical risk. There is really actually very little upside uh, when times, when the best case you can get is an ETF that tracks the market uh, almost perfectly. But the downside risk is actually huge, meaning that if ETF is not done properly, then you're going to have big tracking errors or there's too much cost involved uh, or worse, you have ETF that fails. Uh, basically, we, we want to keep clients out of those ETFs. Those are not the ETFs that we want. So that's why we actually do a lot of work in terms of our ETF selection. Excuse me. Then the other thing is the capital market assumption. Uh, basically, we have a proprietary capital market assumption uh, that we use in terms of putting into the algorithm to make sure that you have that we deliver uh, the appropriate risk return expectation for uh, within the algorithm. Uh, why is why is this important? I think this is really important because a wrong capital market assumption will result in a wrong allocation for portfolio. What do I mean by that? For example, if you ask. Uh, most expert, what is the expected return for equity market? Uh, the textbook answer is to tell you 8%. 8% return for equity market, that's what the long-term return for equity markets is. But basically, for us, we don't, we don't give that textbook answer. We not only look at the long-term return, but we also look at where we start from. So if equity market is expensive, then the expected return for the next five to 10 years for most of us is that we expect market return for equities to be lower than that 8%. It could be more like 6%. On the other hand, if we start from a cheap valuation, then the expected return will actually be higher than that 8%. And we think that that's basically, uh, that gives us a better sense or a more realistic expectation in terms of, your, of our returns. Uh, and also, with, if we have a set, a wrong expectation, uh, wrong return expectation, then basically it's also set the wrong expectation uh, for how you think, how likely it is you think that, that you're going to make your investment goals. So a wrong CMA basically uh, creates two things. One, you may have a wrong allocation because if I get, tell you that equity market return is 8% and bond, bond market return is 4%, 
then uh, the algorithm will naturally lean towards allocating more to uh, equities if you want higher return. But if we tell you that the equity market return is more like 6% and, and uh, bond market return is like 4%, then the portfolio would actually be probably a bit more balanced. I think the relative expect the expectation of relative return is, is important so that we don't allocate to too much risk assets. And the likelihood of the investment goals is that if you expect equity market to deliver 8% return, it might be that you think you can achieve your goal in five years. But if we tell you that the return is more like 6%, then the algorithm will tell you that your investment goals might actually be achieved more like in seven years rather than in five years then you get to decide you have the right expectation and you may, have, you may have to decide that you have to contribute more regularly or more, more money regularly in order to achieve your goal in five years. Then the other thing that we also put into our, uh, into our algorithm is our glide path. For example, when we look if you start with a portfolio that's 50% equities and 50% fixed income, uh, and you have a 10 year goal, now that if eight years have gone by, uh, you, shouldn't, you don't expect that that 50-50 allocation to remain when you ha only have two years left, right? Because now that your investment horizon is sh much shorter, uh, we should be expecting something more like 70% fixed income and 30% equities because you need your portfolio now cannot take as much risk as when you first started off 10 years ago. So basically going from that 50-50 to 7-30 is what we call the glide path. Uh, we, the algorithm will out gradually adjust uh, your portfolio over time from 50-50 to 7-30 and when your investment horizon is very near, it may actually be more like 80-20. So we actually incorporate that glide path in your, in your portfolio so that you don't have to worry about it. It's all done automatically. After saying so much, uh, maybe we'll do another poll so that, you have, uh, so that we can have a sense of what you think of what market looks like uh, in a, going forward. And I think, uh, and I'll also explain what our what our view of market is and how does that uh, actually uh, affect our design for our CMA. So, where do you think the market will end up by end 2020? Do you think that market will go up? And I'm talking about equity markets here or stock market here. Do you think market will go up, go down, or remain sideways? Or do you think, or you're not sure? Right, let me get a feel of what the audience think. Uh, before we basically go on and give us our uh, give us our five minutes view on on where we think market would be, wow, we have a split audience. Basically, one quarter things is going to go up, about one quarter things that is going to go down, and another third things that is going to move sideways. Well, okay, uh, good. We actually have a very diverse view here. Let me give you our view uh, and how it. It, how it affects our, our, our CNA in, in the algorithm. Well, we believe that the market or the economy, the economic recovery is square root shape and that's how market is basically pricing it. Uh, as you remember, uh, during the COVID outbreak, what we've seen is that the whole economy collapsed when government imposed lockdown. And with that, basically, market collapsed 30% because uh, investors don't know what to expect. And there was a lot of uncertainty and market collapsed as a result. But after that lockdown, basically, government uh, actually pumped in a lot of money, whether in terms of, in terms of monetary easing, cutting interest rates. Uh, and at the same time, they also subsidized uh, business costs and personal income to prevent bankruptcy. They make sure that everyone, that we will not have a widespread bankruptcy by uh, giving a lot of subsidies. And when unlocking started to happen, what we see is that 
a lot of people with with who have been locked down for two months and who has continued to receive income uh, actually had that pent up demand that they that we see sort of released so we see a very a pretty sharp recovery in terms of economic activity you know, after two months basically people want to go out and eat at restaurants uh, and you have not been able to shop now you want to go shopping again I think we see we saw that pent up demand in economic activity released, and that's why there's a jump. But at the same time, we have not really gone back to the pre-COVID level because we know that a lot of activities has not has not re, have not resumed yet. Uh, we still can't go for overseas holiday. Um, basically, the uh, tourism is still being affected. Uh, mass gathering of peoples are still not allowed, so we can't have concerts, uh, we can't have exhibitions. Uh, so those activities have still have not resumed. And even in, in restaurants, basically, uh, because of distancing, we're still only at, at 70, 80% capacity. So basically with that, what we have seen is that economic activity is still at suboptimal level. And the real impact on businesses may actually be felt only later this year as the subsidies begin to fade. And with a suboptimal economy, uh, our concern is that a lot of, uh, quite a number of businesses may actually start retrenching people and some businesses may actually not survive. So economic momentum will plateau as businesses and consumers basically adjust to the new reality. So, which is why we think that after the rebound, uh, market will actually start plateauing. And we actually see that um, in those high frequency economic data that's being collected. This is collected by Jeffries, uh, one of US brokers, and it really uh, fits into what we just described a collapse in economic activity when COVID happened and government lockdown. And then as, as they start to unlock, basically we actually see uh, economic recovery or uh, economic activities recover. Um, and then somewhere about late June, with sort of the second wave of outbreak in the US, uh, things actually start to plateau out. Okay, this actually takes into account uh, quite a number of high frequency data, including uh, restaurant bookings, including mall traffics, including uh, hours work in small businesses, uh, including things like traffic jams, traffic congestions, uh, subway rides. A lot of this uh, high frequency data is incorporated into this. And what we've seen is basically a collapse, a rebound, and then a plateauing out, which is what we define, what we call the sort of the square root recovery. Uh, with that, what does that really mean for us? <clears throat> For us, it actually means this. We tone down our return expectation for equities because we think that we are going to go into a, a more moderate portion of that recovery. Uh, and with all the sort of uncertainty, uh, with, with probably the business failures that's coming, we think equity market would, be, would not deliver uh, a strong return a strong return as what we've seen recently. And at the same time, uh, given where equity market is, we don't think that equities are cheap anymore. And therefore we think that for in the next couple of years, equity market return would probably be more muted. And therefore we actually tone down that return expectation in our CMA. The second point is that we also tone down our return expectation for government bonds with all, the, with all the QEs and all the government intervention, bond yields are now very, very low. US Treasury, 10-year Treasury yield is now 65 basis points plus minus. Uh, so starting from this valuation level, again, we, expect, we don't expect a very significant return. We don't think that uh, bond yields can go much lower. Uh, and, if anything, at this expensive level, we think that return for government bonds would be very muted in the next few years. So we have also toned down the return expectation for government bonds. 
So this is a sort of an uh, uh, illustration on how we actually put our market view and put it into our, into our CMA and that affects uh, the, the algorithm for, the, for UOB AM Invest. And this is our value at, as fund manager into the robo-advisor. With that, that ends my presentation. Uh, let me hand this over to Priscilla uh, for the Q&A session. Thank you, Daryl, for that insightful and informative explanation. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is still awake and well. My name is Priscilla Gu. I am from UOB AM Invest Digital Sales Team, and I'll be the moderator for this webinar. For those who missed out on these housekeeping rules, you can post your questions in the Q&A by pressing the Q&A icon shown on the control panel. You can even vote for the questions raised by other attendees. Thank you for raising your questions. Um, based on the most voted in the Q&A, um, Damo, how um, does UOB AM Invest design the appropriate portfolio or how does it match, uh, does it does it match, match a, client a client to a pre-designed pre set of portfolios? If we, if we ever design, design a customized to each, to each client, client, how is, how it, is done? it done? Well, uh, Pris, as we mentioned, we start off by looking at the client's uh, risk profile um, and as well as their investment horizon when they set their objectives. And from there, basically, the algorithm design uh, appropriate portfolio for that kind of risk level that they are prepared to take and the, the, the investment horizon that, that they have. So basically, with that, uh, we create a, a, a customized portfolio for clients. So if, if a client basically uh, starts, uh, what, uh, another client starts one month later with the same investment profile, um, and, and investment horizon, even then, uh, given that markets, market movement and market, uh, market level, the portfolio for that client uh, that started one month later would probably still be slightly different from the, from the, the, the person who, who started earlier. So that's what we meant that when we say that we customize the portfolio for each individual client, uh, basically taking into account your risk appetite uh, as well as your investment horizon. Uh, and then from there, uh, for, it, for clients or investors who have a bit more experience, you've set your investment objective, uh, but you don't like the, what the, the, the resulting portfolio look like or what the, the, the uh, likelihood or the probability of success looks like, you can, uh, some of the, our clients will actually uh, adjust their own portfolio risk to really uh, to help them uh, improve the likelihood of achieving their investment goals. So I think these are some of the ways that we first customize that portfolio for you and then allow you to really adjust your portfolio to suit your, to, to suit your needs. Okay, thank you, Damo. Um, um, so, so a bit of housekeeping. housekeeping. Um, um, for, for those, those who have questions, feel free to raise the Q&A uh, uh, on our uh, control, control panel instead of the chat group. Thank you. Um, Damo, there are a couple of questions. Um, for, there are so many robo-advisories out there. How, does, how do, do investors know which robo-advisors will suit them best? Go with your OBM Invest. No, but seriously, um, I think you need to understand what goes behind the robo advisor. Dig deeper in terms of when you when you do your uh, when you do your due diligence or when you do your investigation or when exploration. Uh, dig deeper, see what uh, see the methodology that they put in. Uh, I explained to you uh, how you be. A, Invest actually uh, uses our experience as fund managers to add value into the robo advisor. If I mean the robo advisor can be something that is very simple. Some robo advisors simply have uh, three standard portfolios or five standard portfolios that everyone subscribe to. 
um, based on based on the sort of your risk risk profile. Um, I think what investors need to do is uh, do a bit more homework, dig into the methodology, uh, understand the understand the the process behind uh, the thought process behind and the process that the that the robo advisors use before you really invest. Thank you, Thank you Damo. Um, um, there's, there's a couple, couple of questions about, about the rebalancing. rebalancing. So, so for Yubo you 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 AM Invest, um, how, how often do we rebalance the portfolio? Um, we typically invest, I'm uh, sorry, we typically rebalance quarter, on a quarterly basis, uh, but we also rebalance when uh, investors put in uh, fresh money into the into the robo advisors when they uh, put inject more money then basically there will be a, automatically there'll be a rebalance to make sure that we redeploy that money uh, according to the portfolio um, but otherwise if there's no fresh injection the rebalancing is actually done on a quarterly basis what we want to do is basically find a balance between rebalancing uh, as well as minimize transaction costs because every time there's rebalance, there's always going to be trades and there's transaction costs. So we try to, uh, to find a, a balance between that uh, and we think that quarterly rebalancing is probably an appropriate, uh, appropriate period. Especially um, during this period when there's so many uncertainty and during this pandemic, how does these uh, robot advisors, especially in terms of UOBAM invest, how do they add value towards investors in terms of investment? I think one good thing about robot advisors is a, it's a very disciplined approach, meaning that uh, if you have a regular savings, um, uh, you have a regular contribution, it's very disciplined. Uh, it takes out the the emotion out of out of this out of this uh, out of the market's environment or market situation, so you don't get caught up with fear or greed. Basically, uh, as you invest, there'll be dollar averaging. If market goes down, you're buying at at cheaper price. Um, and when if mar certain markets, like say equity markets, run up too fast, uh, there's rebalancing to make sure that your you are disciplined. What it does is that imagine that if equity market ran up very, very hard, um, it automatically sells the equity market that is considered expensive or that's done very well and put it into fixed income There's they might not have done as well. So that, that is to a certain extent almost uh, automatic profit taking, uh, automatic uh, profit taking for you. So that there is, it takes the, the, the emotion and the greed and fear out of the equation and basically uh, dollar average for you automatically. So I think that's probably one of the benefits of robo-investing or robo-advisors uh, during, during this sort of environment. I, I believe there are a lot of uh, investors, uh, audience that are attending that have also been with other robo-advisors. Um, how different is your BAM robo comparably to the main competitors out there? I think I just I was I have described that in during the presentation that a lot of um, we actually put in a lot of thoughts behind the UBM invest. Um, there's a lot of proprietary um, research that we've done that goes into the robo advisors. Uh, so the CMA, uh, so the capital market assumption is probably one big part of it. Uh, the fact that we actually included a lot more asset classes. So uh, typically you would get things like not just equities, fixed income. We have REITs in there. Uh, within equities, uh, as if you've seen in the last few years of the US markets have done relatively well in our robo-advisor, we actually have a have, a, have an asset class called U.S. equities, and there's even an asset class called U.S. growth equities, um, and Asia X Japan equities within there. So basically, we create the universe, or we uh, we create the the portfolio with more asset classes, 
uh, with more asset classes involved. So I think that gives uh, greater nuances in terms of the in terms of the portfolio construction. Um, and at the same time, we also put in um, sorry, we put in effort in terms of our ETF selection. Uh, as well as our our trading and execution in terms of this this whole uh, robo advisor because we know as in, uh, as fund managers that all these basically adds up uh, over time and affect your your portfolio uh, returns. Right. right. Thank, Thank you, Damo. Um, thank you, everybody, for raising up your questions. Don't worry. Um, for those questions that is unanswered today, we will address them in the following up emails. Um, so don't worry. Uh, also, you can also contact us at our UOB AM hotline or even in our email box. So now um, we'd like to move. Uh, thank you, Damo, for, for your for explanation and for your time. Uh, we'd like to move on to our next speaker, Bernice to introduce and to explain about our UOB AM Invest app. Over to you, Bernice. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Priscilla and Damo. Now that uh, we have actually shared the ins and outs of the robo-advisor, I also understand that within the Q&A itself, there are many questions that are, that are left un unanswered. We will follow up with that, but in my presentation, we will also try. I will also try to address some of the other questions that are related to fees and the functionalities and the features of the app. So do allow me some time. Uh, a quick summary, UOB AM Invest is your personal expert advisor that helps you build your future wealth through customized investing driven by technology. So you uh, maybe a bit of history before we get into the details and the features of the app. Uh, UOB AM Invest actually started at the end of 2018 as a web-based digital platform made available for companies and offers two different services, the digital advisor, which is a robo-advisor and uh, Fund Direct. So throughout our experience, we actually have some questions coming in as well on uh, why is the minimum amount, investment amount 500,000? That's because we actually have two services. So <clears throat> this, excuse me, this is something that we wanted to highlight, that UOPM Invest actually started for corporates in October 2018. So maybe sometimes as you are surfing the net or actually looking through the platforms, our website, that you might have gone to the website for corporates, and because of that, uh, uh, the, the positive experience with corporates, what we have done is that uh, we have actually started to embark on a journey to create uh, a solution suitable for individuals. So for individuals, we actually only launched on July 20, uh, 27 July 2020, which was just very recently. And from there, you can see that there are quite a lot, uh, quite a lot of changes in terms of the image as well as the design of the solution. So in order to cater to individuals and make it more accessible, we have actually reduced the investment amount from 500,000 to $1. And on top of that, there are also other features like regular savings plan, which uh, we actually offer to individuals and not to corporates at this point of time. So these are actually more suited for regular investments, regular savings as your income comes in, and is different from what we offer from the corporate solution. And other than that, there are also some tweaks in terms of setting of goals because the goals of a company are very, very different from the goals of an individual. Okay, so uh, about the history. Then since we launched, uh, also just to share a bit. So the retail solution is an extension of the corporate digital advisor solution. So this is not something that is brand new. It has been tried and tested before since October 2018. And we have actually garnered all in all for the corporate platform for digital advisor and fund direct more than 400 million in terms of assets under management regionally. We tweak the solution to cater for individuals. I'll run through more features later. And so I'll go through why you should invest with us. Although Damo has already mentioned quite a fair bit throughout the Q&A. We are a trusted asset manager for more than 30 years. We actually... Something I think Damo has been humble and not mentioned as much is that uh, we actually have been managing institutional monies, including uh, his team, as well as our, uh, the rest of the team of our investment managers, institutional monies for more than 30 years. And what we have done right now is actually to adopt our investment process for institutions and catered it and tweaked it and fitted it into the algorithm in order to offer institutional fund management expertise to individuals like yourselves. 
and also finally the investing portion is customized and is driven by technology through technology we are able to automate many of our processes which at the end of the day offers a more hassle-free and low-cost um, solution to you okay next up to the features through these features i'll also explain and answer some of the try my best to answer some of the questions that were asked in the q a so firstly uh, we actually offer personalized portfolios for you to robo invest your way some questions that were asked were more of why uh, how is it personalized and how do we actually customize this solutions for you based on your risk profile uh, your time horizon of investment which for everyone is actually different the algorithm will actually customize a portfolio depending on these few factors and for every single person because your risk profile your time horizon is different as well as the goals that you set are different the permutations in terms of the number of portfolios that can be generated for an individual can be very very different and it's a very high number. So as a result, because of the various permutations that are available, almost everybody's portfolio would be different. So that's how the portfolios are personalized for you. Next. So in terms of costs, uh, there were some questions on fees. So our fees currently stand at 0.8% per annum for the first 25,000. And above that, it will be 0.6% per annum. These fees are actually charged on the average balance, daily balance of your portfolio. And also, um, they are charged quarterly. So if you have zero balances at any point in time of your portfolio for, let's say, this quarter, there will be no fees that will be charged to your account. Hope this is uh, actually answers some of your questions. Other than that, <clears throat> I believe some people ask, uh, if there are lots of rebalancing uh, activities that actually happen through the portfolio, will you incur additional brokerage fees? So uh, the brokerage fees are actually included into the annual fee. And rebalancing is actually triggered on three instances. Firstly, uh, a quarterly end of quarter rebalancing, which is scheduled to happen for all accounts, unless you have actually done a deposit or withdrawal. These two other actions will also trigger a rebalancing. Of course, throughout the period of your investment, you can choose to change your risk profile. And in order to change this risk profile, you have to go into the app and make some slight amendments. But this can all be done very easily through the app. Okay, and next. I think I mentioned several times about the minimum of just $1. Of course, when you invest a minimum of $1, your returns, even if it's 100%, it will only amount to $2. So we are encouraging all investors to put in a meaningful amount of investments. But of course, the $1 actually allows for a lot of flexibility in terms of accurately, being able to accurately allocate your investments. So for instance, if you have a portfolio of $100 and you are supposed to allocate 72% into global equities. What our algorithm and our uh, app is able to do is to customize it and allocate accurately to $72. So that's the kind of flexibility that we want to offer. Then uh, there are no account opening or closing fees at all. So unlike uh, any of uh, some kind of accounts where you need to maintain a minimum balance, there is no minimum balance to maintain in this account. There are no fees for opening or closing the account. And you can get onboarded simply and very quickly through my info. Next, for withdrawals, there are no fees as well. And uh, you can perform as many withdrawals as you like. But of course, we would like to discourage that because robo-investing is actually more suitable for the medium to the longer term. And every time you do a withdrawal, uh, your account will be, your, there will be a rebalancing that will be triggered for your account. So ultimately, we hope and we do encourage all investors to come in with a medium to longer term investment horizon, time horizon, because that's what it's designed to do. And our algorithms actually are designed to perform, to give you lower volatility and a more stable, consistent outcome in terms of your investment returns. Next, the reason why we embarked on a mobile app, some, some questions were asked, why are we not on a web, website and all that was because firstly, um, we looked at the audience. I believe most people are actually on their phones almost all the time. Uh, myself, I, I think I can't live without my phone. So that's why we started on the mobile app for individual investors. But for our corporate platform, it's actually available on the website. It's a web-based platform. So we are exploring uh, for both ways, for corporate to have a mobile app and for individuals to actually have a web-based platform for people who prefer to have it on the laptop. 
but this is something in progress and we look forward to listening and hearing to more feedback from you. Lastly, in terms of the goals that can be set, this can be a, a very fun and interesting thing to do on the mobile app. You can go to the portfolio planner and you can set the goals that you want to achieve in the next couple of years or even up to 30, 40 years later. So ultimately, what we're encouraging is for you to decide on what you want to achieve when you are setting goals and also through our advice and a success probability, which is a percentage that will be given to you to tell you, for example, if we have given you, you set a goal, you have deposited $10,000 today, but in three years time, you want to achieve 1 million. The success probability that the app will return to you is zero. It's not possible. <laughs> Simply because of the investment amount, even if the market performs very, very well, that's what we will return to you. But of course, if you are somewhere in between, of course, you'll start to see uh, probabilities like 50%, 60% and all that. In order to improve your probability of achieving your goals, what can be done? is to either introduce, uh, uh, increase your contribution amount, increase the time horizon taken to achieve your goals, or to adjust your risk profile accordingly. Of course, that's it. If you were to increase the risk, that is ex uh, risk level of your portfolio, the amount of uh, volatility that you'll witness in your account will also increase correspondingly. So that's something that we wanted to share. Okay, and I think that's all I have in terms of features. I believe uh, we'll try to answer as many of the questions as we can uh, at a later stage or to follow up in our FAQs and to send it across via email.